Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Our first hot topic says South Korean investors planning four Nigerian refineries. The federal government has announced that South Korean investors are set to build four Nigerian oil refineries, um, a move aimed at boosting domestic fuel production and reducing the, the country's heavy dependence on fuel imports. The government sees this investment as a significant step um, towards improving Nigeria's refining capacity and easing the burden on its economy. At the same time, the Nigerian national petroleum company, NMPCL, has raised petrol prices by 15%, bringing the cost to 1,030 naira per litre in Abuja and 998 naira per litre in Lagos. This marks another significant hike in fuel prices, which has sparked concerns among Nigerians struggling with the rising cost of living. The price increase comes amidst um, ongoing debates over NNPCL's pricing policies, with many calling for better regulatory oversight and relief measures to mitigate the economic impact on the population. Now, joining us to discuss this is Olabode Shomi, is the CEO, Captree Limited, and Chairman, Energy Transition Study Group, NGA. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. Yes, good morning. So we're talking um, Nigerian refineries being, uh, you know, from, from South Korea, we're getting investors. But before we even talk about um, the investment that is going to be here with our refineries, let's talk about the price of petrol right now. We've seen a price hike, three actually, in two months. Um, as of right now in Lagos, it's 998 naira per litre at NNPC's um, fuel station, mm -hmm. but with other stations, of course, it's over a thousand naira, and in other states, it's way over a thousand naira. But I want to understand um, where we are right now as a nation, especially when we're an oil producing nation. We're supposed to be having our own refineries, but we do not, none of them is working. We currently have a privately owned refinery by Dangote, but even the prices are not just the best at the moment. And now we're even talking investment from South Korea. I don't know if that's going to have an impact, you know, um, because that was how everybody wanted Dangote refinery um, to have an impact on the petrol price. But where we are today as a nation, having to buy fuel for over a thousand naira per liter, what's your take on that? Okay, um, good morning. Thanks for the questions. I think uh, primarily there's a part of the dynamics that um, Nigerians owe to themselves to be knowledgeable about because it's a knowledge industry. Mm. So when you talk about um, the impact that Dangote Repairing was expected to have, mm. uh, one of the reasons for that was the way the issues were being reported. Uh, they were being reported to the extent that because Dangote Refinery was in Nigeria mm -hmm. and because importation uh, the transportation aspect mm. was going to be eliminated. They expected the prices to come down. But unfortunately, when you look at the total cost of the final product, the transportation aspect is not as significant as to the extent that it will affect the price in the way Nigerians were expecting. Mm. And somehow that was not corrected. Uh, that the impression was not corrected. And as a result, when the realities came on ground, the people who also benefited from the impression that Nigerians had that they would be significantly cheaper had, uh, had to also come to ground with it. So the key issue as to why the prices seem to be going up or are going up, rather, is the fact that there is a dependency on the dollar the actual cost of the refined product which is when you check on the global index it's an amount in dollars that has not changed it is the fluctuation of the naira to the dollar that is pushing for the increase or should i say necessitating the increase in the naira so we also owe it to ourselves as nigerians to also be aware of what the dollar rates are and so that when the dollar to the naira falls, we expect that the prices should go down. We also need to also know what the crude oil prices are, so that when the crude oil prices fall, 
then the cost of the um, finished product should also fall. And that is where knowledge comes in in the whole play. Mm. So it's not just a case of an arbitrary increase in price or somebody just waking up and deciding that the prices should increase. It's actually a case of market forces and market dynamics. So I mean, that, that would be my contribution to that. Okay, so we're talking about market forces and market dynamics. Um, with this investment coming in, that means we might just face the same thing because from what you've explained right now, it's the dollars and it's the fluctuation of you know our own currency denier that determines what we're going to be buying this product for so that means if we have four refineries that you know is coming to nigeria being um brought by the south koreans we might still be paying the same amount is that what you're saying yeah right we might we might but don't forget that um there is a deal that has been signed for dangote which is that they should sell them crude oil in naira Mm -hmm. If they do sell them crude oil, that means the dollar to naira issues will not affect their own products. But mm -hmm. that is still for them to determine because it's a private refinery. Mm -hmm. So they may still naira and still choose to sell at competitive prices. That's entirely up to them. But where the differences are is that when there are multiple refineries and all of them get the same deal of crude oil in naira, and all of them push out the issues the, the forces of competition will ensure that one person will sell to nigerians at the best possible prices mm. and at that stage that to benefit mm. so th those are the dynamics in the in the in the thing so dangote was when um when dangote refinery was to uh, resume um operations or resume selling to people one thing that was on the lips of so many people was um he was trying to be monopolistic and so because he's the one that has a current um you know working refinery that's why he's putting or pegging his product at that price with this south korean investors you know coming in with not just one but four refineries do you think that thing will be eliminated whereby we would have a significant impact especially if they're going to be buying in naira um you know the transportation part i know you've said it's not a major thing but are we going to see a major impact with the price because 1000 naira per liter is is ridiculous at the moment and of course it would have a ripple effect on the prices of goods and services in nigeria how do you think this would work for Nigerians? Because it's okay to say, yes, we're having four refineries. But I hope that our hope, I, I'm, I'm expecting that our hopes would not be dashed at the end of the day the same way it was when Dangote came with his own pricing. Do you think there would be a major impact whereby the price of PMS in Nigeria would be reduced significantly? Well, um I, I wish i can say what you want but <laughs> my, my job is just my job is just to analyze what the facts are and people yeah. make up their mind yeah when you look at the, what determines the final price at least what determines it for the person that is producing it the crude oil the crude oil itself is mm. a significant factor so it's it's the feedstock and the crude oil because it's a commodity it's uh, fungible itself that it has a, what you can call a universal price. So mm -hmm. you can wake up today and check the global price of crude oil. That price of crude oil is what is responsible for a lot of what is determined by the final price. But there's another dynamic which is not directly energy related. And that dynamic is the naira to the dollar. That's an economic issue. Mm. Now, that to the dollar fluctuation is what is responsible for the repeated increase because every time there is greater pressure on the naira i mean on the dollar from the naira the thing keeps going up it's those those are simply the issues whenever the koreans come or i mean they're not they're going to start investment even if they do groundbreaking today the refinery will not be up until about three years mm -hmm. that's if they do groundbreaking today and grab breaking today they are still at the point of negotiation and all that before yeah. they sign papers before they move to sites i mean they, they they have to even give them a site which they've not done that so we are not talking next year we're not talking two years time we're talking somewhere down the road mm. when we get to that what that will offer us is clear competition mm. 
Mm. That's what offer. And in a competitive environment, it makes it brings causes everybody to be on their toes and to give the best and, and to give the best uh, options that are possible. That's what it does. Mm. That's wow. what it does really. So it as to whether that will uh, reduce the price. It's all dependent on market forces. I mean, they are private company. Even if it's government company, you understand? If a product is costing 100 naira, and for whatever reason, that product is being sold for 80 naira, you know that either the person selling the product is giving you 20 naira discount, mm -hmm. or the person is marketing the product, is running it at a loss. That 20 naira does not disappear. Mm -hmm. So whatever be the cost of the product is going to be reflective on how it is being sold. So that is a reality you cannot shy away from. So and that thing, that the fact that we are trying to shy away from the reality of the dynamics is why there was so much expectation on Dangote that was not real. Right. Mm. You know, yeah, and it that was largely is a result of how the issues were being reported. And of course, because I mean, they are business people. So it, it, once the reporting is favoring them, why would they go out to counter it? Mm. It is our own responsibility, and even on the media, to res re report facts, to report what is the truth, so that people can make up their mind. We, we don't help ourselves by pushing emotion and sentiment at the expense of facts. At the end of the day, we're still going to suffer it. Mm. So this is the fact of the matter. These are the issues on ground. What is the way forward? That should be the question. Mm. It's not that we are trying to force the issues to be what it is not. Mm. And that would be my own. I, I quite agree with you. You know, even with the Dangote refinery, I think a lot of people were just sentimental um, because, of course, it's a, it's a local refinery. Dangote is Nigerian. We're just expecting him to prioritize, um, you know, Nigeria first. But, of course, it's business. And in business, there are no sentiments. He's in there to you know, make profit, which is understandable. And I think because we just felt that the transportation part was going to be caught off, um, definitely things would be maybe more affordable for Nigerians. And this is where we are now. But I'm going to talk about the fact that you said this would probably happen in three, four years down the road. So that means as of right now, because if we're looking at a way forward, as of right now, this is the price or this is what we have to, you know, just chuck in. So is this how we're going to be in Nigeria for now? And what do you think the government can do to help us? Because it just seems like we're sinking deeper and deeper, especially with the price hike every other month. And now we don't even know when the next one will come again. What can the government do to help, you know, just alleviate the sufferings, the pains of the people? Well, it's reform time. So the only thing they can do is go back to subsidies. Hmm. That's the only thing. The other part of it is to allow the thing play to the end. You see, um, Nigerians talk about things they want in the end. In other words, they talk about the end game. Yes. They don't want. I mean, if you check the UK between 79 and 1990, when they did all the reforms and they moved from socialism to what the uk is now which which was actually the, the the foundation for the prosperity of the uk many people lost jobs families were scattered i mean so many issues that happened mm. it's the nature of it's the nature of this is when you check the reforms in the 60s and the 70s in china that led to what china is today people died i'm not saying that people should die i'm not mm -hmm, saying yeah. that um <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that people should be aware. I mean, when you ask for, everybody was saying, yes, there should be reform. Everybody was saying subsidies should go and all that. But it's like people were saying subsidies should go, but it's like they weren't understanding the effects. Oh, they were not prepared. So when you want to mm. No, it's not. I mean, how do you get prepared for a crisis? It's, it's, it's not really, it's, it's more or less being aware of what the facts are. Mm. So it's like people these reforms people want all this change but they don't want the effects of it so that's where it's more like it's more like um not being realistic living a double life that's that's what i see in a lot of this thing. because when you say 
that we don't want subsidy. And we have moved up to this stage at this level in the thing. What else can government do? Because it's a free market. So the only other option is to maybe give them the product for free. You can, so which we are now back to where we were or worse. So in the end, unfortunately, unlike other regimes, this government actually cannot afford it because they don't have savings for it. So they, they can't even really afford it mm. should they want to. So the issues will be what other things can we do to the economy that will allow the dollar to naira ratio to come down because that's also another way for the prices to come down yeah. but if the only option we are looking at for prices coming down is a direct government intervention then we may not necessarily be realistic with our expectations and we may not really be interested in change which is okay but that means we have to tell ourselves as a people that fine or we are not interested in progress we just want things to be this way and since it's a democracy if the majority of the people don't want progress and we just want subsidy and we just want everything to continue like that then so be it but at least we will know that that is what we want mm. but we cannot be mounting progress develop nation developing economy and all that and still be interested in the practices that is against it so th those are the balances we need to decide for ourselves in terms of what we want. Hmm. I quite agree with you because a lot of times we say we want a progressive nation, we want more, but it just seems like it's wishful thinking. We want it, but we're not ready to bear the pains with it. But a lot of people right now just don't understand what's going on because... I mean, the government is trying to put reforms in place, which is the end game. This is where we're going to. In as much as we don't really have a clear picture, but we kind of understand that. But as of right now, a lot of people cannot afford the basic necessities of life because you cannot even commute to work and back. Transportation has taken most of your salary. Talk more about, you know, paying your kids' school fees, paying your rent, even having to save. You can't even save right now. You can't go on vacation. You can't do so many things. So how can we whip up our economy? Because that was something that you had said um, when it comes to the dollar, right? Our own currency, make it stronger. How can we whip up our economy whereby we can even be making more and then even the price of PMS would not really affect us as much? Okay, well, so that's an economic issue. Yes. I'm not necessarily an economic expert. Mm -hmm. But I can say this. When I have um, um, this kind of scenario where the, the Naira, as in the local economy, is facing this kind of crisis, one of the strong things you can do, that's as a personal person mm -hmm. or as a community, mm -hmm. is to export. So when you look at the nations, which are small in number but have very strong currencies i'm talking about like sweden which has less than 10 million mm. or norway which has about 5 million and th these countries are some of the richest countries in the world they i mean take for example sweden they they have a policy that any business once you have gone past the startups of alarm mode once you have reached the third year mm. they encourage the company to go in now, irrespective of whatever, even if they are selling food, they will encourage them to move abroad. So with the result that you have a lot of million dollar small companies because they do things abroad. I mean, take for example, we have a lot of farmers who do sell oranges. Most of the oranges are spoiled because of the distance it takes mm. from getting it onto the road. What happens if they are aggregated at local government level? I mean, especially with the local government autonomy that is taking place mm. and they decide that with support from the see the commercial section that they start to export and they start to get contracts for them what happens if and when we are able to get 20 farmers or 30 farmers per state who start to earn dollars maybe they're earning ten thousand dollars per state you see that that is income that is independent of the federal government and independent of the current system and that will revolutionize any local government. Any local government now that has $200,000 coming in into that local government that is independent of the system will become a prosperous and stable local government. 
And even all this price um, of oil that we're talking about will not be relevant to them. In simple terms, when there is crisis, the same necessity is the mother of inflation. There is a need to think outside of the box. The problem that we have is a refusal to engage in thinking and expanding our mind. It's more of continuing the old way. And what is the old way? That wherever there is a problem, whatever the problem is be, even if it's somebody can't go to the toilet, government must do something. No, it's not necessarily that way. There is a part that is individual responsibility to prosperity. There is a part there is a local government that should help you. There is a part that is a state government, and there is a part that is federal government. All these four components need to work for it to lead to the prosperity that we so richly deserve. Hmm. Well, I think we have a lot of work to do from what you've said. And we need to start looking for other ways to, you know, make money in, to get revenue if we really, really need to whip up our economy. But I think I must ask this question because there's no way we would, you know, talk about, you know, South Korean investors coming to um, have refineries here without talking about our own refineries. Now, we have four refineries in Nigeria, one in Wari, I think two in Port Harcourt, one in Kaduna, and none of them, are working none of them are in operations even the potacot refinery has been you know postponed the operations have been postponed about six times as of august 2024 um i think they were supposed to resume then but it was moved again kajuna refinery was scheduled for december we're not even sure if that is going to happen why are we not really looking at our own because if you even want people to come in to your own country to invest you need to have done the work here why are we not looking or prioritizing our own refineries um, where they are working and then we can control the prices because, of course, it's our own crude, we refine them and it will just work for us. But instead, we're looking for external um, forces to come help us instead of doing the work here. So what do you think about our own local refineries and why they're taking so long? I think at some point, you know, it has been said that one of the refineries was about 90% completion. Even with that, it's still taking so long. We're not sure if any of them will start to work this year. But why are we not looking at our own home before inviting people to come in? Okay. Um... That's like three questions in one. So, but <laughs> let me try. Um, as to as to why the things are not working, to be honest with you, only the people on the sites, or at least the NNPC, can give us factual information about that. Mm. We can only analyze the based mm. on what has happened in the past. But here are some facts about NNPC and the refinery. NMPC is a government institution, yeah. which in itself is also trying to undergo with, with the, which means it is made up of civil servants. You don't need too much knowledge about Nigeria or anywhere else to know that mm -hmm. civil servants don't necessarily make the best business people mm. in any field. So it is not impossible that that is also a factor as to why the refineries itself are not working. The second part of it is that it is actually not a new thing. The refineries have not been working for decades. I mean, mm. in the last 20 years, they only have not worked up to three years. So, yes, the attention is on them now, which was not on them before. But pressure of six months or nine months will not necessarily solve a dysfunction that is 20 year old it will just move them to start to work so the question the, the issue about the refinery as to where they really are as to the need for them to be quick to get it functioning and all that is something that it's the people in the in the nmpc that can really ask and journalists who can do investigative reporting and actually report the issues. So that is that for that. With respect to um, uh, the people coming in from South Korea to invest, uh, people invest based on market dynamics. People don't invest because they see that their competition is doing fine or not doing fine. They invest because 
they have seen it's an individual thing it's an individual responsibility people invest because they have looked at their business plan that they have created and see that the thing is profitable for them so in other words you can have 10 businesses that fail and that doesn't disturb somebody who is going to invest primarily because they are investing looking at what they are able to bring into the play and solve it at the same time you can have 10 businesses that seem to be succeeding and then somebody does his own business plan and see that this thing cannot work for him and he doesn't invest so the way we tend to look at these things that are if we have not done this why will other people come it it doesn't work that way that's not how investment takes place people invest because they believe that their interests are going to be protected so and the south koreans are not actually new here they've actually been trying to be to get into the field since 2005 in fact they actually won an oil well I mean, they won, won an oil uh, mining like OML line license um, as far back as then. But they were involved in a long drawn court case with a company that was connected with one of the chief PDP uh, chieftains at the time. And they were in court for more than 10 years before they left. So they're not totally new to the Nigerian environment. So maybe they've gotten some concessions and they've gotten encouragement from the government. Maybe that's why they're back. Well, we hope that, um, you know, we will just try our best because I think that would help us a great deal if we have our own working refinery. Like you've said, the civil servants, uh, maybe they're not just doing their best, but we hope that there's going to be a mind shift whereby they know or they understand the impact of their own jobs and what it would do for Nigerians. And with, you know, the um, South Koreans coming in, you said they are not new here. So hopefully this would help us. I know it's not um, a short term um, measure right now. It's not something that will start to see the dividends at the moment, but in the nearest future, we will. I don't know what we're going to do as Nigerians, but I'm sure we just have to weather this storm, brace up, and hopefully all of these policies and all of these reforms will start to yield fruits in future. Olabade, we want to say thank you so much for coming. It was a pleasure having a conversation with you, discussing this and just understanding, because I mean, I've even learned a lot more into the energy sector with this conversation. So thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you, madam. Always a pleasure. Yes. Have a good day. All right, so we're speaking with Olabode Shoumi. He's the CEO of Captree Limited and the Chairman Energy Transition Study Group, um, NGN. We've just been talking about the fact that some South Korean investors are looking to invest at least four refineries in Nigeria. We'll go on a short break now. When we return, we'll be discussing our next hot topic that talks about betrayal by elected leaders aiding bandits, and it wouldn't be tolerated according to the NDF. Please stay with us.